Our next speaker is Alan Costa, and Alan is 81 years young. He lived with bladder cancer for 23 years and prostate cancer for 10 years prior to his recent lung cancer diagnosis. He walked three to five miles, five to seven days a week prior to his surgery, and it's taken a year, but he's now averaging two to 3.5 miles, five days a week. That is inspirational. He's an avid football and college basketball fan. He's been married for 59 years to a fabulous woman. Is she here, I hope, to hear this? Because to a fabulous woman with four children and two grandchildren ages 12 to 14 and seven grand adults ages 20 to 28 plus. Two months after his surgery, Alan traveled to France and Italy and climbed the 135 Spanish steps in Rome, receiving a standing ovation from his wife, daughter, and son-in-law, both of whom are doctors. It's my pleasure to welcome Alan to talk about his experience. Well, my speech is over. They took care of it. Uh, when they asked me to speak and to tell my story, it was really an opportunity for me to really look back to determine what my story is. It's not just 15 months ago when I had lung cancer surgery. It really dates back 55 years, because that's when cancer entered my life. My mother was diagnosed with colon cancer, terminal. She had maybe a year to live, and she lived her bucket list. And it really set something for me on if anything ever happened in my life that I needed a bucket list, I knew what to do. In October of 1994, I was diagnosed with bladder cancer. That was a Thursday. That night I had surgery. Two months later, I had surgery again. And I asked my doctor why is this the methodology you're going to use? He said, we'll continue with it. At that point, myself, my family decided, doesn't sound good. Let's get a second opinion. We were living in New Jersey. We came to New York. Sorry, but it's Mount Sinai. And we found the doctor that we considered the best. He checked me read the slides, and then <clears throat> I said to him on a Wednesday afternoon, if I decided to come to you, what would you do? He said, well, I would start with BCG. Well, my opinion, the way BCG works, is that was immune therapy when nobody talked about immune therapy. That was 23 and a half years ago. A lot has happened in between those 23 and a half years. In 1999 or 2000, because my mother had had colon cancer, I did colonoscopies from my age 40 on every year. Well, they found something. And I had colorectal surgery, benign. Another good one. In, 19, in 2006, I got prostate cancer. One cell, one sample out of all of them. Watchful waiting was the determined method to follow. Three years later, did another biopsy, nine negative samples. My doctor didn't believe it because my PSA, the word about prostate number kept going up, 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 and continues to go up, and my prostate is the size of the Empire State Building. By the way, we found out about the BCG because my son came in when, in about the second week after the surgery, came to the house and with a pile of paper this high. I got all of this off the internet. It tells us everything about bladder cancer. And that's where we saw the BCG, which at the time was 55% effective. At the end of 16 treatments, no success doctor said, would you like to, were you willing to go into a trial? I said, I'll try anything. 
Three months later, we do another test. He says, come in again right away. Scared the hell out of me. I went in, he said, okay, cancer's gone. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it was there when we talked about it. We didn't do anything, it's gone. It was an interesting thing that was in those four inches of paper, besides the BCG, was that my type of cell, there was always an opportunity for it to reoccur in 12 years. 2007 came by, guess what? It reoccurred. Went through the treatments again, and then two years of prophylactic treatments until I said to him, that's it, no more. I can't take the treatments anymore. And he says, okay, we'll watch it. No cancer. Every six months for 23 years, I have gone for a cystoscopy. It's part of what I do. It's just routine. Just like going to a ball game, I go to the hospital. For <laughs> I had a period of time when I was just getting tests. It was nice, it was wonderful, nothing was bothering me. The prostate went away, the bladder was under control. I didn't have a problem with my colon. But the prostate still bothered my doctor. He said, I want you to do a bone scan and a CAT scan. This was in February of 17, which I did. But I wasn't gonna get the results till after President's Day weekend because he was away. But the Friday before, I got stomach pains. I had to go to an emergency room, something I've never done in my life. They come back and say, okay, the pain is because you have gallstones, but you have a mass in your, in your lung. Well, two weeks later, my wife and I were talking about it before we got anything going. And he said, there must have been somebody looking over me to make sure that we responded to those two CAT scans. So Tuesday, after President's Day, we went to, so my ga internist, my gastroenterologist, did a sonogram, saw the surgeon for the gallbladder, who said, unless you cannot suffer the pain, don't bother, leave me alone, that's it. The technician doing the sonogram moved the stone away from the duct and all the pain went away. And hasn't bothered me since. On my, in, my internist, Greg Pataro, took charge of my health plan. From the point of his starting the calls, I never called another doctor for an appointment. The doctor offices were calling me. Is this what everybody wants? Yes. Is this what NYU delivered? Yes. I finally met my surgeon in mid-March, recommended, didn't know her from Adam. I think I scared her away. She's now at the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> she told me what they were going to do. And... She said, do you have any questions? I said, I have a question and a statement. The statement is, get the damn thing out. The question was, I'm going to France and Italy the middle of the June, can I still go? And she said, I don't see why not. Well, as you heard, I went. The surgery was two days after my 80th birthday. That was one hell of a birthday present. The surgery went very well. I couldn't believe it. I was out of the hospital in less than 48 hours. The, I went home confused, unhappy, in pain, 
could not understand why this all happened. I had this long stretch of nothing. Why did this happen? Never smoked. My mother was a smoker. And I hated smoking. In fact, if I'm walking past somebody who's smoking and they're walking past me, I go in the other direction or hold my breath. It's really an issue for me. And it doesn't mean I don't own stock in uh, Philip Morris. I got home and played around adjusting the medication. I was allergic to one of the painkillers. And then I started to cry several times a day, not understanding what it was all about. And one of the days that we were in for a checkup, I saw the flyer for the lung cancer support group. And I called Catherine and I said, here's my story. And she said, well, I think you ought to see a therapist. I said, good. I'll find one for you that'll work for you. She did. I saw the therapist and it was interesting. We sat down, I introduced myself to her. She introduced herself to me and I then spoke for one hour. She didn't say a word. At the end, she said, how do you feel now? I said, fine. She says, good, call me if you need me. My issue was I had three very dear friends die of lung cancer, one of which lasted one week after diagnosis. So that was hanging there, and what I was having was survivor's guilt. And I had not looked back at my history at all yet. I didn't think about everything else I had gone through. I was really focused on this issue. Why did this happen to me? Well, I decided to join the lung cancer group, although Catherine said, we need to find a survivor's group for you, but you come to our meetings, which I did, and I think she's glad I did. Um, the group is wonderful. We all recognize that no matter what stage we are in the, our life with cancer, we are survivors. The definition by a dictionary that I found who had a reasonable definition. A survivor is a person who continues to function and prosper in spite of the opposition, hardship, or setbacks. That's what we all are, no matter where we are in our, in our situation with cancer. I'm very lucky. I've been very lucky all my life. I'm clean and I'm doing my pay forward as I volunteer one morning a week at the cancer center. And I'm gonna cry, cause I'm a crier. <laughs> uh, and those four hours are so important to me. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, but they're my patients. Thank you.